particularly on how we can reach that level of tranquility, the level of satisfaction, and the level in which an individual is not only tranquil and satisfied about their existence, but they are tranquil and satisfied for the true reason for why they exist. Meaning they are not believers or they're not blind followers thinking that they're happy. You know, there's some people who think they're happy. It's a false perception in life, which is not true. Then there are those who are true, happy people. There's a distinction. And Allah, out of His infinite mercy, does not want you and I to have a false perception about our existence. It is better to be brutal with the realities of life and assess in a direct, blunt way to understand who we really are than for us to live in a society that is filled with glittering facades that makes us feel like we're happy when in fact we're not happy. Look at drug abuse. Why is drug abuse so much in the societies, especially in the West, and of course also in the East? Why? It's because there is no happiness. There is a sense of void that human beings go through. Anger is a very prevalent state of existence. Look around us. Just yesterday we were in a shop and my respected brother Mahe was saying to me, he said, did you notice there's a lot of anger? And he's right. It's everywhere. You look at people the wrong way, they get angry. You get into some transaction, everybody wants to blow up. Everybody is ready to get angry. Anger is very common in society. You will see it even at work, people are under a lot of tension. Alhamdulillah, there are people who are in a state of happiness for the moment that sort of balances the equation and allows others to exist. Because if we all got angry at the same time, there would be a serious problem in this world. But you find people get angry because they're unhappy with the situation that they're in. So Allah wants us to be happy. But His happiness is not the type where He puts a bomb on us and makes us feel false, falsely secure. No. He says, you've got to validate who you are. You've got to strengthen your quality for who you are. And to reach that level where you come to the root level and you validate yourself, you have to have problems. If you are not faced with problems in life, you will never value yourself. Look, friends, I've seen this so common. Where you find people are great friends. But when they go into business, or they travel, or they live with each other suddenly you get to know their real self. Why? Because you become too close for comfort and you get on their nerves. Because, you know, we fluctuate with our emotions. There are days we're happy, we wake up on the right side of the bed. There are days we're very unhappy and we're annoyed and everything triggers something in us. This behavior is a classic indication of an individual who has not caught on to the rope of Allah. Holding on to the rope of Allah which Allah says, Lamfisa malaha, it doesn't break. What Allah is giving me is a consolation that when you're dangling on the edge of a cliff, but you have certainty that this rope will not break, you're satisfied, you're happy. Though the situation is dangerous, though the standards that we are in are full of movements, you know, that are very hard to figure out. Who's going to cheat me today? Who's going to say a bad word to me today? Who's going to bring some petty issue forward? Who's going to annoy me for some silly thing? Or something more important? But you'll find we're constantly in that state of anger. When people get angry, they try to look for solutions. Typically, the ignorant ones tell us that when you get angry, scream. See, they, they, they take their very base character. In the animal kingdom, when two animals want to take over a territory, they don't go have discussions with each other. You know, they don't have reflections and let's figure out, uh, you've got a nice tail, i got a nice tail, you know. Your fur is a little bit better than mine, but what do you think, huh? How about we chart out a little peace treaty here? No. <laughs> you know, two gorillas get together, each one beats his chest and starts screaming louder than the other. Do you notice we do that? Hmm? When people have a problem, what do you do? You scream like a gorilla. Screaming! You see sometimes neighbors four houses down the line, <laughs> you can hear them screaming. What's your problem? Well, they figure that if they don't scream loud enough, they get, don't get authority. What it does is then it changes the demeanor and the character of the individual. 
and you find they have no way of solving the problem. They dig a grave for themselves. People get into so much anxiety that they look for solutions. Classic, I've mentioned this so many times, and my God, you cannot imagine how dangerous this discussion is if it's taken the way it is, the way people live in the world today. That all you need is one introduction to some kind of a hallucinogenic drug or some kind of a drug that's addictive in nature that's going to give you a great feeling that first time and you feel so consoled and you're trapped. So many people come to me and say, brother, I'm hooked on Vicodin. I'm dying with Vicodin. I said, why? When, the, when I first took it the first time, I had this great dream. And man, it was a great dream. And I just loved this dream and I, I wanted more of it. See, it's, it's an escape. But a true believer is the one who Allah puts them under difficulty and shakes them. But says to them, go check out what your real value is. And at that stage, the only way you'll be calm, the only way you'll be serene, the only way you'll make sound judgments is when you connect yourself with the true maker, the one who brought you, the one who shaped you, the one who's taking you back. Subhanallah. So when Allah says we put light in front of you, it's precisely so you don't feel the darkness. So you don't go to Vicodins. You don't go to crack. You don't go to some brothel. You don't go to some evil places where you commit all the evil acts. You don't. Rather you go home peacefully and you peacefully meet your family with a smile. And you hug your children. You hug your wife. And you speak kind words. And though there are problems with money, and there are problems with the neighbor, and the, there are problems with the job, but you have total trust in God. Allah says, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They have total trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. It's very important for us to understand that if you and I, brothers and sisters, honestly, I have lived in this world long enough to have gone through the entire scale of materialism, fantasies, and all those satanic uh, attractions. Alhamdulillah, we didn't indulge in some of those forbidden acts, but we got near them. We sensed it. We saw it. We felt it. And was our desire, was my desire there? Yes. It's human nature. Allah says, Inna nafsa la'amaratun bisu. Your na- yourself has a desire to go there. Illa ma rahima rabbi. If you don't latch yourself on properly, you won't get this peace. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, no wealth, no power, no color, no size, nothing is more important than tranquility in the heart. I can say this over and over and over. In my university years, when I was taking my courses in uh, philosophy and psychology, you could see that the most prevalent discussion in all philosophical discussions is how do we reach that state of tranquility for the self? Why is there such a big movement now about the Buddhists and you finding uh, uh, Sufism is becoming popular in universities, Sufism, esoteric uh, discussions. You find Zen, you know, Zen philosophy is very prevalent and you find some places are very, becoming very popular because people are looking for tranquility. And all of those systems have some good in them. We don't denigrate them. They all have some value. But they are not complete. They don't take you to the goal. And if they don't take you to the goal, sometimes you go far enough and you fall further than where you started from. Unless you take the right pathway, it's not possible, brothers and sisters. So we've been given this power that Allah has allowed us introspection.